Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another word problem dealing with quadratics and more specifically the vertex form of a quadratic. So we're told a soccer ball is kicked and its height in meters above the ground, where x represents the horizontal distance in meters is given over here. h equals negative one over 18, x minus 24 to the power two plus 32. So given that scenario, we got three things to do here. We got to find the vertex and what the meaning of it is. In part B, we have to find uh, what is the height at a horizontal distance of 18 meters. This should say 18 meters here. At what other horizontal distance does the ball have the same height? And then in part C, we got to sketch the graph and describe the values X and H can take. So let's, uh, I'm going to erase all this here, give myself some room. So let's start off with... Um, with the vertex and that's easy to get because it's already in vertex form right we got the a x minus h squared plus k and we know that the vertex is always the h and k value so in this case the vertex is 24 and 32. now another thing is notice that the a value is negative and that makes sense because it means that the parabola is opening downward. And if you think about it, if you kick a soccer ball, it's going to create like an upside down U type of shape, right? So the parabola should be opening downward. So the A value should be negative. So what's happening is it's reaching a maximum height of uh, 32 meters. So if we actually uh, you know what, let's, let's do part C first. So let's actually sketch this, um, this graph. So we're going to kind of go out of order here. I'm just realizing it's probably best to sketch it and then, uh, and then talk about the uh, different characteristics of it. Right, so we have the horizontal distance, which is the x value, and then the height. So we know it's going to reach a maximum height of 32 meters at a horizontal distance of 24. Now to sketch this graph in a little bit more detail, let's see the height it starts at. So if we plug in zero for x, that's going to give us this h intercept over here. So if we plug in zero, or x, uh, so we would end up with what here? So we'd have 0 minus 24, which is negative 24. That's going to be the power 2 plus 32. And then we'll have negative 24 to the power of 2 would give us 576. And then we do the multiplication here, negative 1 over 18 times 576, or 576 divided by negative 18, both of those are the same thing, would give us negative 32, then we got plus 32, and that's going to give us 0. So at an x value of 0, we get an h value of 0. So that means that it's going to start right there, and that makes sense because the soccer ball is being kicked. Sometimes, let's say like a goalie is kicking the soccer ball, they'll be holding it, so usually then it'll start at a certain height. But in this case, it's starting at a height of zero, meaning it's being kicked from the ground. And so what's happening is the soccer ball gets kicked, and then at some point, it's going to land on the ground. So the vertex here is 24 and 32. So that means that 24 represents the horizontal distance, the horizontal distance from where it's kicked, and then the 32 represents the height. Right? So that's the meaning of the vertex in this particular question. So the ball is reaching a maximum height of 32 meters at a horizontal distance of 24 meters from where it's kicked. So if you kick it from here and if you measure a horizontal distance of 24 meters, that's when it's going to reach that max height of 32 meters. Right, and then it's going to land on the ground at some point. And actually, it's, uh, it's fairly easy to tell where it's going to land because notice that we have an intercept at zero. We know the axis of symmetry is happening at 24. 
And so we have another intercept here. And we know that the axis of symmetry, it's always going to be in between the intercepts. It's going to be the halfway point. Well, because the intercept that we know one of the intercepts is at zero, and we know the halfway point of 24, that means this distance is 24. Well, because it's symmetrical at this axis of symmetry, then we know that this is going to be 24 as well. So 24 plus 24, so we know this is going to be at 48 meters. So at a horizontal distance of 48 meters, that's when the ball is going to land on the ground. All right, and it's pretty easy to just tell here. Now, if it was like another graph, and we will go through graphs like this, where maybe um, a ball is maybe thrown off a roof, or again, if like a goalie kicks a soccer ball, it starts at a certain height, then to figure this out is going to be a little tougher because you're going to have to get the negative intercept and then use the vertex, and then uh, the vertex is going to be in the middle between this negative intercept and that intercept right there. So then it gets a little bit more complex. But luckily in this question, we started at the origin there. So if we get the axis of symmetry, we just have to multiply that axis of symmetry by two to get this other intercept. And I don't think this question even asks when does the ball, um, where does the ball land? But we will have to use this when we describe the different values that h and x can take in part c. So I'll do that at the end. But that's the graph, nevertheless. So that's what the meaning of the vertex is, right? The ball is reaching a maximum height of 32 meters, 24 meters at a horizontal distance of 24 meters from where it's kicked. And then in part b, what they're asking for is what's the height going to be at a horizontal distance of 18 meters? So a horizontal distance of 18 meters would be like right there. So what they're asking for is, what's this height there going to be? Well, what we can do to find that height is we could just take that 18, that horizontal distance of 18, and plug it into the equation. So we'd have negative 1 over 18. Uh, we'd have 18 minus 24, plugging in 18 for the x value. That's going to be squared plus 32. So we'd end up with a negative 1 over 18. This would be negative 6 to the power 2. We've got to do the exponent first. Uh, that's going to be 36. And then negative 1 over 18 times 36 would give us negative 2, plus 32 would give us 30. And that makes sense. That makes sense that the height is going to be less than the maximum height at this point. You could see with the graph. So at a horizontal distance of 18 meters, the soccer ball reaches a height of 30 meters. So that's the answer to the first part of part B. Now, they're also asking at what other horizontal distance does the soccer ball reach the same height? Well, notice the height is here. Well, if we draw a line, well, it's going to reach that same height of 30 meters over here and it's going to be a horizontal, some other horizontal distance here. So in this case, we'll have to solve for x. So a couple of different ways you can do this. You can plug in 30 for this h value and solve for it, and then you'd end up getting two values. Or what you can do is you can notice that this is symmetrical. So if it's reaching a height of 30 here, and notice that the distance from the axis of symmetry, sorry, there's like a lot of lines drawn here, but hopefully you're following along. So the distance from here to here has to be the same as the distance from here to here. Okay, because it's a symmetrical, a parabola is always symmetrical about that axis of symmetry. Right, so if it's reaching a height of 30 meters here, it's also reaching a height of 30 meters there. Well, we know what the distance between these two are, right? It's from 18 to 24. We know that this is a distance of 6 meters. So that means this is a distance of 6 meters. So we could just add 6 to the 24, and we'd end up getting 30 over here. So that ends up being the, um, the answer to the second part of part B. At what other horizontal distance 
does the ball reach a height of 30 meters? Well, it's going to be at a horizontal distance of 30 meters, okay? Because it has to be symmetrical. We already have this value, this value, and we know the 30 is happening here at 18, right? That's what we solve for over here. And so you can just use that information to find out when's the other point that it's going to have that same height. Well, it's going to be that same horizontal distance from the axis of symmetry as the other point is. Okay, it's all symmetrical. So this is 6, so you could just know that this is 6, 24 plus 6 would give you 30. Now, if you wanted to solve it algebraically, again, it's not necessary to do so in this case, but if you wanted to, well, you'd have to do quite a bit of algebra. We can go through it though, just so you're uh, fairly comfortable in doing it. So we'd have to, in this case, solve for the x value. So there's gonna be a lot more algebra here. So we bring the 32 over. So we'd have 30 minus 32, which would give us negative two. Then we got negative one over 18, x minus 24, and that's gonna be squared. And then the next step is we want to get rid of this a value in front of here. So we wanna just divide both sides by negative one over 18, like that. So these would cancel out, so we'd end up with x minus 24 to the power two. And then negative two divided by negative one over 18, that would give us positive 36. If you wanna do this on the side, this is like negative two over one, divided by negative one over 18, which would be like negative two over one times negative 18 over one, which would give us positive 36, like that. And then from here, we wanna get rid of this exponent. So what we could do is we could square root both sides, square root of 36, that would give us six, but square root is plus or minus six. So we'd have x minus 24 now by itself, like that. So there's actually gonna be two solutions to this, right, because of this plus or minus six, and that makes sense because there's two points at which the ball is at a height of 30 meters. So we would say six can equal x minus 24, or negative six can equal x minus 24. Bring this over, x would be 30, or over here, bring this over, negative six plus 24 would give us um, 18. Right? So we get those values as well. Right? We get those same values. So that's a nice quick way to check algebraically, or maybe your teacher might require you to solve this algebraically, these two values algebraically. Um, so it really depends. I guess it depends on your teacher. Uh, they may just let you look at it symmetrically to get this 30, or they may want you to solve it algebraically. So those are the two ways to do it. But either way, whichever way we do it, notice that the numbers do correspond, so we are all good. All right, so that's it for part B. And then finally, part C, we have to sketch the graph, which we uh, already did over here, but they're also asking what values can X take and what values can H take? So with just an abstract parabola, the X values are always anything, any real number, because if this wasn't um, a word problem, this parabola would keep extending. But in this case, what they're saying is, um, what values can X take? So notice that it could only be from zero to 48. So X can be any real number between zero and 48, right? Because it doesn't make sense that the ball is gonna go through the ground, right? It's gonna start on the ground, it's gonna be in the air, and then it's gonna hit the ground right there, right? Any other X values, like negative X values or any X values greater than 48, the height would be negative, which would not makes sense. So that's all the values that x can take. Now, if this was, if you're using set notation, we would say x is an element of real numbers and x has to be between 0 and 48. Greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 48. But your teacher may not be doing this format, so then you don't have to worry about it. Now the h value, notice it could go from zero, right? The height can't be negative. The ball's not going to go through the ground. So the minimum height is zero. What's the maximum height? 
32. That's where that H value can fluctuate from. So the H value, the height can be any real number uh, between zero and 32. If you wanted to do it in set notation, we would say H is any real number where H is between and also equal to zero and 32 like that, right? Greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to 32. Now, if you're not doing this set notation, again, in class, don't worry about it. Don't be intimidated by it. You could just ignore that part. This is more grade 11, to be honest, but there are some great teachers that start doing this, um, this kind of notation. But if they're not, these are the sentences for the values that X and H can take, right? So if you get something like this, I actually just recommend starting with the graph, get as much detail as possible, draw something, and then when you're going through the questions, it's a lot easier to see what you are solving for.